Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to another Krebs Co. replay cast from the game Company of Heroes. So today what we're going to be doing is enjoying ourselves with, yet yeah, again, another 1v1 match on Semwa. Seems like every single game nowadays is just on Semwa, but I don't know, I think the last cast I did was 1v1 on Semwa. I don't think the one before that was on Semwa. I don't think so, anyway. Uh, but it seems like I'm just looking at Semwa all the time. Semwa, 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 every replay I'm watching is Semwa. Uh, I just cannot get away from it. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a particular topic in mind this time around. It's going to be PE Tactics, Panzer Elite, because a few of you have been asking me to do some Panzer Elite specifically. So I will show you guys the general gist of how to play the Panzer Elite, sort of some uh, build orders and stuff like that, right? Okay, so this is Semwa. Semwa, Semwa, Semwa. I love, one thing that I actually really love is when you look at this map from a different angle. So you guys can tell it's a bit rotated at the moment. It looks like a totally different map, doesn't it? I mean, look at it. If you looked at it originally like this, say if this was the first uh, image you had of this map, you'd be like, what the hell is that? That looks completely new. But no, little and behold, if you switch around, there you go. It's just a normal map. How unfortunate. Hey, get your hopes up, I suppose. Okay, so let's get this game started. We're at the five second mark. We're going to be starting in three seconds. So we're in it's going to start in three seconds. Okay, three, two, one, and let's begin. Six, seven, eight... 9 and 10 and on we go to another very exciting matchup in the Company of Heroes Battlefield. Don't know how you guys are feeling today, but I'm actually feeling a little bit lethargic and a little bit um, tired. Ooh, I just feel like I got a yawn on me all the time. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because every now and then there's these spurts of rain outside. The weather really does affect my moods uh, at times. Sometimes, for example, when it's raining, I there's nothing... Some, some days, for example, there's nothing better than staying inside. If there's a rainy day, you know, when you're it's raining outside and everybody else is suffering out there, getting all wet, and you're just inside all cozied up and enjoying your day. But other times when it's raining, it's just you feel so lethargic and so tired. Then when you have sunny days, sometimes you feel like staying inside and just enjoying the cool breeze come through, and then other times you feel like going outside. So it really is. Uh, the weather really makes your mood so temperamental at times. Anyway, so today we're going to be looking at a smurf going by the name of The Abuse of These Days as the PE on the left side hand side of Semwa, and his opponent is going to be Seth as the Americans on the right hand side of Semwa. Alright, so I don't want to actually um, deviate too much because as I said, let's talk about some PE strategy this time around. I am going to give the Americans a bit of love, so don't worry about that, but let's focus at the moment on the PE. Alright, so the PE, what they're doing is they're building actually two Kettencrads. Now, um, a common question you might have when you first start in the PE is what how many Ketten crabs do I need? Okay, um, that is a similar question to how many engineers do I need? How many uh, pioneers do I need? How many uh, infantry sections do I need? Well, it really is a matter of opinion and a matter of uh, What your strategy that you're aiming to tailor around now admittedly most people actually go for a single Ketten crad It's very unusual that you would see someone go for a double Ketten crad, but it does occasionally happen at times the reason they do that is because they allow themselves to cap at a faster pace, okay? Say if you only had one Ketten Krad, you'll only be capping once, uh, one uh, strategic point at a time, right? So effectively, you're doubling your cap capping power, but at the cost of bringing out an additional Panzer Grenadier squad. Obviously, Ketten Krabs do not cost as much as Panzer Grenadier squads. However, there is always a deduction from the manpower, correct? Okay, so... One good thing to actually use Ketten Krads against uh, is, for example, the Americans, particularly the Americans, because Americans with the Riflemen, they're very good at capping. In fact, the Americans, I believe, have a 1.5 times capping rate, which is absolutely mental, okay? When you think of, like, a normal unit that has one times capping rate, they have something that's just about that and a half. So they cap at a very, very fast pace. So by having two Ketten Krads out, you can effectively sort of negate that a little bit and just keep yourself constantly capping. Because if you guys don't know, the Panzer Grenadiers are horrible, absolutely horrible, terrible. I don't remember the exact rate. It's like, I don't know, it's, I'm, I'm keen to say it's 0.75 times, but then again, I'm not very too keen on saying it because they cap at a horrendously slow rate. So a lot of people don't even uh, bother capping with Panzer Grand Grenadiers at all, unless they have such an advantageous moment like this, for example, where they've chased away the enemy and they're on the front. That's the only time they would do it. Now for actual Panzer Grenadiers. So, say if you've gone for two Kenton Krads, how many Panzer Grenadiers do you get? In a typical strategy for the uh, Panzer Elite, they would go for at least 
four Panzer Grenadiers. Most people go for four Panzer Grenadiers or three Panzer Grenadiers. We usually see four Panzer Grenadiers. By doing that, what that allows you to do is effectively have the most amount of units out on the field by the time you would have enough fuel to build your first building, all right? So it's all about a fuel race. I know this is gonna sound like very basic stuff to all the intermediate and uh, more expert people, but then again, we can reiterate these points i'm sure you guys sort of have this own um thought thinking in your head just how this stuff goes because when you have the panzer grenadiers out four panzer grenadiers oh whoa he has five panzer grenadiers that is very unusual maybe this is going to be a bad replay for me to do an example of how to play the panzer league but um okay well we can go for something more unconventional so rather than one kentonkrad and four panzer grenadiers he's gone for two kentonkrads and five panzer grenadiers that's unusual, but we'll live with that, I suppose. We can deal with that. Um, he has a load of fuel floating at the moment. By this time that somebody would have this much fuel out, they would actually have built their first building. There's obviously a few things that you can build, but the one of two choices that you can initially build is either logistics company or the comp group company. Okay, so by having one of those out, then you can progress on to building your T3 tier 4 buildings. Um, most people actually go for the comp group of company, the reasoning being that there's not many strategies currently tailored towards the logistics company. For example, a logistics company, what can you build? You can build a funk wagon, you can build munitions half track, um, and oh god, what is the other one? <laughs> oh jeez, don't tell me I've already forgotten this. So it's the funk wagon, the munitions half track, and also a... Uh, scout car, I believe that is it. Sorry about that. <laughs> Just absolutely having a brain freeze there. Um, and a scout car, right? There's not that many strategies tailored towards it because most of the vehicles that come out of the logistics company are more so for support, all right? So a munitions half-track would replenish your guys' abilities on the field, for example. A funk wagon would um, allow you to cut off your opponent's resources, also siphon that a little bit towards yourself. Also, the scout car, it can be upgraded to sort of act like this as a observational post. However, um, it's not the most powerful of units. It can suppress units a little bit, but it's not the most powerful. So the stuff that comes out of logistics company is mostly tailored towards support. You also get increased squad sizes out of it and um, things like that. You also get AT grenades. But most people go for the comp group of company because they get some mortar half tracks, they can get infantry half tracks, and such stuff like that. They can also get um, panzer shreks, for example. So there's a lot more offensive ability from going for a comp group of company. Um, a lot of people actually love going on up to the uh, mortar half track, for example, and then going to uh, take on their enemy that way. However, this is where the deviation of strategies actually begin. For example, when you would have a comp group of company, tier 2, what a lot of people do is they go by something called a leapfrog. Now, obviously, all this sounds very theoretical at the moment. Maybe you don't really understand it, but let's take a look. He's actually doing this uh, exact thing of what I call a leapfrog. What he does is he builds the comp group of company, but he doesn't build anything from it. He just builds the building, then he jumps on up to something else. A lot of people, what they might go for is the... Um, Panzer Jäger command so they could get armored cars. However, he's actually gone for the Panzer Support command and in fact he's actually upgrading it right now. The reason that he's upgrading that right at the moment is so that he can get the Panzer IV support tank. Alright, so that is a, this is a very unusual strategy. We hardly ever see something like this. In most games, what we actually see is a leapfrog. We see uh, initially one Ketten crowd, four Panzer Grenadiers, leapfrog from Kampf Group of Company up on to the Panzer Jaeger Command, not the Panzer Support Command, the Panzer Jaeger Command, then get some armored cars out of there, then back tech slightly to get some mortar half tracks out of the Kampf Group of Company. That is what we usually see. Not guaranteed to be set in stone, though, uh, because obviously, as we see from this game, it's not really happening, right? Um, so hopefully that's giving you guys a general gist. I know it sounds maybe a little bit a lot for you guys to absorb in, especially if you're newer to this game. However, it's theoretical. Maybe what you could do is rewind this replay slightly and just listen to what I'm saying. If you can apply it to your play slightly, then you would actually understand. Um, so what he's actually doing is building the Panzer IV support, or the Panzer, uh, Panzer IV... A support tank, all right. So that is tailored towards uh, taking on infantry. It's it does a decent job against say like an M8, a light vehicle, but it's not really the same for actually heavier vehicles. It's got a tiny snout, a tiny turret, so it's not really got that penetrative capability, right? It's uh, a more faster shooting 
sort of tank and it's more specific for taking on infantry. So it's a very unusual strategy because we hardly ever see people just jumping on up straight to a tank like that. Um, I can sort of understand it to some respect because we saw five Panzer Grenadiers and also two Canton Crabs. So those two Canton Crabs, what they must have been doing was capping the fuel specifically because we saw that huge amount of fuel floating. So by having the men out on the field and the Canton Crabs, they could have actually uh, guaranteed themselves enough fuel supply in order to actually go on up straight to the Panzer IV Infantry Support Tank. And there you go. So these men are going to go in for a decap of this support um, of this manpower point, and by doing that, they would cut off all these uh, resources over here. But Panzer Force, <laughs> Panzer Four, coming out to actually prevent them from doing that. All right. So overall, it looks like on this map so far, it's just a complete encom encompassing effect. I mentioned this in uh, a lot of my previous casts about this encompassing effect. Whenever you have your opponent that is doing this sort of thing to you, where it's just they've got the top, they've got the south, they've got the center, and it's going right on around you, then you know you're in a stuffed position. <laughs> you know you're in a bad position, and you need to work your way out of there because they have a majority control of the uh, strategic points and that's what we actually see at the moment for the Americans however they are being a little bit um, taken back at the moment got some mines going off whoa what the hell happened there I believe the guys must have uh, revealed that mine if you guys didn't know the um, Ken Krads can also reveal mines so it's actually a very useful thing to uh, keep a note of. Kenton Crowds can reveal mines, and by doing that, there you go. I guess the Panzer Grenadiers must have actually shot it, attacked the ground, and actually destroyed the mine like that, because we didn't actually see anything cross over it. So fair enough. Fair dues, that's another way to actually uh, take on mines if you're the Panzer Elite, because it can be frustrating otherwise. Because the only thing you you can do to counter mines, you don't get mine sweepers. You can use your Kenton Crowd, or you can also get the Fieldcraft ability for... Um, from I believe the Kampfgruppe company and that allows your men when stationary to actually uh, look at mines, spot mines, however it's an unreliable ability because I mean how many people are really going to be uh, stopping somewhere for three seconds and then trying to spot mines, very unrealistic thing to do so uh, most people don't actually bother with the field craft apart from it actually increasing your capping rate to 1.25 times around there for your Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, people don't really bother with it. It's not really a sort of typical upgrade that people would mostly go for. So what we've got is the infantry support tank actually in the Americans base right now. A little bit tense, especially if they're American. Because they have no form of AT. All they could possibly have is maybe stickies. And that is about it. And what this tank is specifically doing is he's aiming down the uh, motor pole. No, he's not aiming down the barracks. No, he's not aiming down something else. He's going strictly for the motor pole so that he can prevent any AT guns coming out of there. But what we have actually is the AT gun just coming out right now. Come on, Abuse. Can you take him out? And yes, he's turning around his, his AT gun. Taking out one of those AT guns. Oh, God. There must have already been one. That was taken out because the engineers tried to man it already being taken out and this other one just about to go down here oh my gosh two AT guns gone just like that and in fact one of them completely destroyed and the motor pool is gone so no more AT guns can be produced the only thing that the Americans could do at the moment is grab that AT gun that they lost right over here or what they could do is get some stickies now I like what uh, abuse is doing he's retreating his tank knowing your limits to retreat your tank um, he's done a good job, he's done a lot of damage, so you might as well get it out of there, and what is he doing? He's actually moving it back in, not a good idea, not a good idea whatsoever. I don't know what he was doing, he was actually retreating, and I think he was doing uh, something very good uh, there, because his tag is already half down. Um, let's think about this, because as I was saying, the only thing that the Americans can do right now is get an AT gun, that AT gun over there, man it, or get sticky bombs. So, they are going to have a difficult time of even doing anything by grabbing that AT gun. Chances are the Panzer IV would just kill it straight away. So he might, he should have been anticipating that the Americans would be getting stickies and sticking him. And look, this, this, uh, 
Oh, that's so horrible. The tank is just about to be going down. Oh, what a waste. What a waste of a Panzer IV. I mean, he easily could have gotten it out of there when he was actually falling back and get it repaired, then bring it back on in. Even if he brought it back in with the full health and it got sticky, who cares? Because if it could do that, if it could plant itself down and be shooting at a very fast pace and killing, mauling these uh, riflemen apart, it'd have a lot better survivability if it was at 100% health, obviously, wouldn't it? So at least we've got another Panzer IV support out, uh, tank out on the field. Very unusual strategies for the Panzer lead. So it seems like they're heavily relying on these to be acting as the main force at the moment to take on the Americans. Now, if there was some sort of AT, then the Panzer, or if there was some sort of tanks that came out on the field, the Panzer lead wouldn't be quite stuffed, to be honest. But then again, still a bit too early in the game, and uh, the Americans were screwed over a little bit too much for any proper tanks to come out. M8 wouldn't be sufficient because the Panzer IV could actually take on an M8. No problem there, right? Okay, so the Panzer Elite, though, what are they doing? They're building some stuff out of the Kampf Group Company, and that's what I mean. Building something ahead in the um, higher tiers, and then back teching down to building like a mortar half track. This is a lot of anti infantry capability. I'd like to see some anti tank just to be on the safe side. Maybe a Panzer Strike here and there would be nice. Now, I've been giving the uh, Panzer Elite a lot and lot of. Um, love the last 14 and a half minutes well yesterday was valentine's day so i suppose we have to give somebody a little bit of love this valentine's day so uh yeah the panzer elite panzer elite can get a little bit of love now over onto seth who is probably a bit envious because i am just uh, hogging on over the panzer elite now onto seth now what is he actually been doing seen We've been seeing quite a sort of typical uh, American strategy with him, just loads and loads of riflemen. Nothing surprising there, he's also gone for the Armored Doctrine. Um, so he's actually working towards a Pershing, I believe. Because I believe if you go down the way with the field repairs, you're actually working towards a Pershing. And I believe the way with the Allied War Machine is towards the Calliope. Um, so fair enough, that's what he's going to be going for. So if he can actually get a... Pershing out, well, the Panzer Elite would definitely be screwed then because nothing would be able to penetrate it. That the Panzer Elite currently have, they don't even have Shreks out at the moment to even take on any vehicles. Uh, the only sort of anti tank is a very weak version of anti tank by the Panzer IV support. Tank! That is about it, but what I really enjoyed by the, by the Americans so far this round is just the amount of capping. They have really been capping, capping, capping decapping all of the Panther Elite's points as much as they possibly can, just denying them of getting the resources that they need. And that is how you win the game, obviously, by denying your opponent all of those resources, right? So, Americans still need to be more, a bit more careful because the American riflemen are not going to be enough to take on these tanks. Yes, they can throw stickies. However, how many stickies are you going to have to spend and how much uh, munitions are you going to have to spend? You know, that's quite a bit, right? So, moving on towards some other heavier vehicles. M8 is, I suppose, a good starter. It can put down some mines and stuff like that. That could always be a good start. Now, there's actually a little bit of debate about, you know, who... What would you prefer to use? Say if you've got all the expansions, you've got Tales of Valor and you've got the normal company of heroes and you're st stuck between the T-17 and the M8. Which one would you prefer? This is a matter to, of opinion, but a lot of people actually prefer the M8. Personally, I actually prefer the T-17. I say that for a few reasons. The M8, while as effective as it is, I don't think it's... Um, superbly effective i mean you can kill infantry and such you can lay down mines you can upgrade with skirts but that's the whole thing you have to upgrade it likewise the t17 it actually gets health bonuses with veterancy initially it is quite a weak tank and can die very easily but i believe at veterancy one it gets a massive massive health increase of like plus 125 health or something like that around that area um and for free, that is with veterancy. So just pinging off guys here and there. And plus, I believe the T-17, I don't think it actually shoots at, as fast as it used to in 2.601. I mean, 2.601, it was just rapid, rapid, rapid. They slowed it down quite substantially in this patch. But you know what? It's still an uh, effective tank. But the one ability on the T-17 that I particularly love is the ability of the uh, white phosphorus rounds. It's very special and unique to the Americans because they, basically when you have it, it's sort of like the um, uh, buttoning effect by the Brits. It's a white phosphorus round. It actually stuns a vehicle. And that can be particularly important. So say, for example, you go into a situation like uh, there's a Panzer IV 
um, vehicle that runs into the midst of all your riflemen. And say if you had the worst situation where none of your riflemen had stickies. Just say if that happened, theoretically. If that happened, what you could actually do is get the T-17, stun it, and then the Panzer IV wouldn't actually shoot or kill any of the, your guys. It'd be stunned. It effectively can't do anything. It can't, it can barely even move, to, to put it into perspective. So, um, you can save your guys. You can also use it offensively, so you can stun a vehicle. So, you can even do that with, say, like a Tiger or a uh, king tiger even uh, if they're all, br all brought onto the field you could actually stun them with your t17 and flank it around with some of your m10s or your hellcats or your shermans and destroy the the tiger or the king tiger like that i think it's a very underused um uh, vehicle the t17 and i don't think people effectively appreciate just how awesome it can be um T-17 is definitely a great thing. It's just a lot of these games, especially against Wehrmacht, a lot of times people will go for the Terror Doctrine and get King Tigers. And when they bring out the King Tiger, it's just an absolute pain in the behind. So if you can earlier in the game actually maintain your, your T-17s, keep them alive. You know, if you had one or two, two would be the best. You could pretty much... <laughs> use a white phosphorus round on the King Tiger at all times. One T-17 would use it at one time as soon as that's worn out, the other T-17 could use it, and so on and so forth, right? Until your M10s would go around it and just destroy it. So I definitely think it's an underused tank. Um, it is very effective. However, for whatever reason, people just love the vanilla M8. I don't think the... I don't know, the... They have MA, uh, <laughs> mines, which are a bit more powerful than normal mines, but, you know, they do cost a lot, like, what, 50 munitions or something like that to actually purchase one. It is a lot of manpower to invest, and or uh, munitions to invest, and especially when it gets destroyed. As we guys, as you guys saw, the infantry actually destroyed that revealed mine by the Kettenkrad that was dropped by the M8, so, hmm, kind of a waste, wasn't it? Now, 20 minutes so far into the game, 444 for the... Americans and 269 for the Panzer Elite. What I don't like about the Panzer Elite at the moment is that they're being too complacent. We've actually seen them being uh, blobbing up all their men, all their units, pretty much over here in the center and making some sort of defensive line. Don't really like that. In any game that you play, especially more expert games, oh gosh, this <laughs> oh, has a smoke trail. <laughs> oh, very lucky, Kentonkrat. Very, very lucky. I thought I actually thought it was going to be destroyed there, but at least it can be repaired by the Panzer Grenadiers. But what I was saying, the last thing you want to do in a game, especially in a more expert game against Seth, for example, is be complacent. To just keep your guys over in one area and just sit them there is the last thing you want to do, because then your enemy knows that you're there, and what they'll do is they'll set up an attack. And, um... It's important, no matter what faction, if you're Americans taking on the Axis, if you're the Axis taking on the Americans, never be uh, sitting in one spot because you can definitely bet that the enemy will be building up something and trying to take you out, right? So at all times, keep your guys moving. Keep capping, keep capping, keep capping. Don't forget that. Um, so basically, all these units right here are not doing anything. They really are not doing anything. I mean, for example, the these two units, such as the um, Pants 4 uh, tank and also the Hetzer, what they could actually do is move up here. Same with the uh, light AT half track. They could easily move up to this cutoff point, take it out, cut off the Americans of all these resources that I've highlighted in my uh, green box right here, and that'd be it. And they could control it as well because they have AT, they have anti infantry, and that is absolutely perfect, right? That's all you pretty much need. Now, how are the Americans going to respond to this? The Panzer Grenadiers actually, or the Panzer Elite, have actually gone for the tank destroyer tactics. Um, and they've got those Hetzers, as we were just saying. They've got the Hetzers, costly things to actually purchase. And an interesting choice. What we've seen in this game so far from the Panzer Elite is tons and tons of anti infantry, but not so much anti-tank and so this Hetzer is out in the field to act as anti-tank I'm not exactly sure if I could really really agree with it because it is what like 600 manpower for a single Hetzer um the PE has spent enough manpower as is to actually buy all of these uh their you know Panzer Grenadiers and various other things and they spent enough manpower for that so what I believe the PE should actually do is probably go for maybe martyrs or something that would cost fuel. Maybe work towards getting a Panther battle group. That's what I think should be done 
Um, maybe you don't have to agree with it, but I think that's what they should actually do. Rather than spending all this uh, manpower on a Hetzer, which if it was, or yeah, well, Hetzer, and if it was destroyed, well, you'd have to spend another 600 manpower on a new one. That is way too much to be uh, spending on a tank, um, especially when you've already spent so much manpower. I could understand a Hetzer if there was, if you, I don't know, didn't spend that much manpower if you're trying to, hmm... If you didn't have tons and tons of infantry, for example, maybe, maybe, maybe so, right? Okay. So it still is very, very complacent. I'd like to see these guys moving about. We saw the MA go, go down just now, but how are the Americans going to respond to this? Well, they're going to respond in the terms of anti-tank weaponry. They have an anti-tank gun, they've also got an M10, and also a second M10 out on the field. Now, very nice thing to have that field repair. I believe that the Americans are actually putting together a uh, tank army at the moment. A tank army! Very interesting stuff. By having a tank army and field repairs, I mean, they've got munitions saved up over here. Uh, 150 munitions. They could definitely bring in one gigantic uh, swoop of men and also activate that field repair so all their tanks are being repaired. It'd be very difficult to take on if you had such an amount of tanks coming in and they were being field repaired, for example. It'd be very hard to actually take all of that on because they're effectively getting free health and staying alive. It's just, it's very hard to do, right? So whilst this is all going on, the Americans and the PE are just fighting along the left-hand side. But still, not really that much going on. The PE, I'm not exactly sure what they're trying to plan out here. They've just got all their men out in the center. And now, this is what I was saying in my last cast about just what I would recommend newbies if they want to play expertly. Definitely go for the Panzer Elite. Because, okay, let's do a direct comparison of the different variety of units out for the Americans. Okay, so they got riflemen, so that's one different unit. They've got M10, two. AT gun, three. Uh, let's find maybe an engineer or something. Engineer. Engineer, four. So in total, they have four different units. Now let's head on over to the Panzer Elite, which they have uh, Mortar Half Track, one. Light AT Half Track, two. Panzer Grenadier, three. Uh, Hetzer, four. Kettenkrad, five. What else do they have? Um... Hmm, well, okay, maybe it doesn't seem like that much more. Uh, oh, so they have a uh, Panzer Force Infantry Support Tank, so that's six. Six, so that's already two more than the American that they have to deal with. But let alone that the Panzer Grenadiers each can be upgraded with different weapons. They could be upgraded with an MP44. They could be up upgraded with Panzer Shrek or Gewehr 43. Uh, so you just have to take into consideration of those as well that can bring it up to a total of maybe nine different units each doing something different and so that is a lot to micro with and that's what a lot of newbies when they play Panzer Elite they particularly struggle with micro and keeping their guys alive these guys are so lightly armored if we just look at the AT half track, light AT half track, just look at this thing. It's just like a normal sort of car, like your everyday sort of uh, Ford or, or Nissan or whatever. And so it'd be so easy to penetrate and kill. And that is just one of the hard things, micro and keeping your guys alive, right? So we've got a M10 army being produced here. Three of them in mass. Also that AT gun still over here. Also the uh, American rifleman moving in along the left hand side. Still no idea where the what the PE are trying to do here. They're playing way too defensively and it's kind of unusual that they're doing this because throughout the early to mid game they're actually just playing uh, quite aggressively, weren't they? I mean, they were capping like mad, they were sending their guys in everywhere, but now they're playing very conservatively and very defensively. They were risking their uh, Panzer IV, they went, uh, rushed into the American's base, they actually got destroyed. So you would have thought that was sort of like sacrificial, very bold, sort of very offensive style of play. Now they're playing very conservatively, so complete 180 of styles here um, by, the, by the abusive these days. Complete 180 of style. Um, being very conservative. Hmm, maybe he could have been a conservative a little bit earlier when he was trying to retreat that Panzer IV, but obviously not really doing that, right? So we've got three M10s and also the fourth one being produced. Oh my gosh, this is a lot of AT. So say if they move them right now, what could happen? Well, there's only a Hetzer to defend. There's only a light AT half track. There's only, and that is it. 
Uh -huh. We've got some yeah, units moving here. Oh, and we also got a Panther Battle Group. So at least that evens the playing field a little bit here. So Panther Battle Group, Hetzer, and also Light AT Half Track could actually help out quite a bit in leveling this playing field against all of these uh, M10s, especially the Panther Battle Group. That'll definitely help. So I guess maybe this is what the Panzer Elite were trying to do. Wait until they could get a Panther Battle Group. Wait until they could get a Panther Battle Group. Fair enough, and that's it makes sort of sense because Panther Group Battle Group 1000 manpower that is a huge amount of cost. Um, Seth, for some reason, I don't believe he's actually upgraded his supply yard, uh, because his his um his manpower is really down there on the rate. Look at that, that's really low. So over onto the PE. So two. Well, say if you wanted Panther Group Battle Group, 1,000 manpower. You got an income of 240. That's effectively about uh, four minutes and however many seconds to actually get a Panther Battle Group. That is a long time in perspective of this game. That is that is quite a bit of time to be waiting. Good thing is that he can actually afford a second Panther Battle Group in just a wee moment here. But still. It costs a lot, a lot, a lot, and that's why I believe that if you have Hetzers, they cost a lot themselves. 600 manpower, as you guys can see, for a single Hetzer, so if you wanted to, that's 1,200, and that costs more than a single Pan Panther Power Group, and even though Panthers are really good. Um, in comparison between a Panther and a Hetzer, I'm not exactly sure which one would be better. I mean, definitely uh, Hetzers are hard to penetrate from the front. Uh, they lack that sort of rotatable turret. But I don't know, I think the guns are about as effective. Other nice thing with the tank t destroyer tactics is that they can actually get the APCR rounds. For example, when they go for the Ag Panther, they can get the APCR rounds, which allows you to get effectively 35% uh, extra penetration per shot and oh my gosh look at this mass spam of m10s five in fact and also the at gun taking down the first uh panther here with the oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh with the field repairs activated let's see the damage that's coming out out here we got the at gun going down the m10s some of them badly damaged here but huge losses, one Panther gone, the Mortar Half-Track gone, the Light AT Half-Track gone, the Hetzer gone, and what casualties has the M10s taken so far? One AT gun gone, that is it. Also just one M10 falling apart there. Uh, the others were being repaired by the field, uh, field repairs, and that's what it means. Such a great ability to call out, especially when you're making an attack like this, a huge attack. Field repairs giving your guys uh, uh, a better hope of survival. And there we go, this Panther is just being cornered here. And oh my gosh, going straight on up to tier 1 of that veterancy on the M10. If you guys don't know the veterancy for the M10s, at uh, tier 1 veterancy, what you actually get at level 1 is, I believe, an extra 25% max speed increase, which is really not that effective. I mean, that's maximum speed. It doesn't mean you're going to be consistently going at a faster rate. It just means your maximum speed is plus 25%. At Veteran C2, you get an extra plus 50% penetration on your turret, meaning you'll have a better chance of taking on these Panthers, these Panther Battle Groups, penetrating them from the front and guaranteeing a penetration pretty much every time. Also, at Veteran C3, you can get an extra plus 25% damage so not on top of only that penetration but doing a huge amount of damage as well and these m10s really look like some sort of wolf pack at the moment i mean they are just moving about as they freely like to taking out this half track over here and that was another field repairs activated oh my gosh look at these m10s pretty much a full health and we've got another path of battle group coming out a bit late at the moment if they had two panther battle groups that other one initially and this one out they maybe could have stood quite a good chance but now, two separate Panthers, especially with the distance between them, they should be firing uh, at the exact same time all the time. But now this is horrendous. Oh my gosh. Talk about infective views of Panthers. Um, he should have brought them out together, side by side, so they could be firing at the same time. Because basically this Panther was effectively by himself, even though the distance was quite short. He was pretty much by himself, and this Panther was not shooting. And now he's by himself, and three M10s to take on. One Event 2 and one Event 3. Oh my god, in fact, he's just dropping. He's given up entirely, because that was just way too much to deal with. So, well done to Seth for actually winning that. Oh my gosh, that was uh, 
quite a spectacular ending, wasn't it? Just a huge mass of M10s, M10 spam almost. But, you know, that is okay. He wasn't doing a huge outright spam. I suppose five tanks is a lot, but he knew that was the most effective way of just taking out the uh, the very complacent PE who are just uh, hiding in this one area, just building some sort of defensive line. That was going to be the best way, and he was just going to put down a field of repairs and make most effective use of it. So, unfortunately, Abused actually dropping out of that was way too much for him to handle, and maybe he didn't have enough uh, resources to actually get another Path Bar, but we can't actually check because the replays ended. Oh well! But anyway, guys, so hopefully that has given you a bit of an idea to what the Panther, Panzer Elite are. Um, as you guys can see, he finished off with going for the Panzer Jäger Command and then upgrading all of those upgrades from all three of the buildings here, and then going for that Panther Battle Group. Alright, so that is what he's finished off with. Okay, so hopefully that has uh, given you a better gist of what the Panzer Elite are like and how to play as them. Um, for the Americans, they've done quite a standard sort of strategy. The only thing I can say where the PE went wrong is that they were just waiting around way, way too much. They could easily have pushed here and cut off the Americans and held it as well. Oh, wow! Well, there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this cast. Um, but until next time, guys. Oh, gosh. I don't want to say bye to you guys. Oh, no. I don't want to say bye. Oh, but I guess it's just that time again, isn't it? Anyway, until next time. Hope you have a very nice day. Bye-bye. <laughs>